Okay, recently I was accused of being a universalist. I am not a universalist. The problem with universalism is it does not focus on the works of Jesus Christ. Universalists, now there are Christian universalists, but I'm not a Christian universalist because I'm not a Christian. Universalism in any form takes away from the accomplishment of Christ. They are one step in the right direction as far as God's character, which is love. They know that eternal torment is wrong. I'll give them credit for that. But they almost believe every lie that Satan's ever told. And I'm going to give you a fantastic example. The famous Scottish Bible scholar, William Barclay. I think I got his name right. William Barclay. His works in Christianity are extremely popular in the Protestant side of Christianity. If your work becomes as famous as his work, you've done something wrong. And he did. Now, this man was a professed universalist. He believed that in the end, everything would come back to God. I don't know the exact belief system he adhered to, but he was a universalist. He did not believe in any miracles in the Old Testament or the New Testament. He believed in free, a form of free will. He believed in hell. And he believed in the immortal soul. The one thing he didn't believe in was the Trinity. Even for him, the Trinity was uh, nonsense. Very intelligent man, uh, photographic memory. I think he was smarter than he let on. But he wasn't a believer. I know, isn't that a strange thing to say? Someone that says that everything will return to God, but they're not a believer. Because belief belongs to Aeonian life. William Barclay was looking to whatever eternity is, or whatever comes after the eons. He's going way too far. Right now, we're in the trenches. We're sharing the truth that is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 3. And we expose the tripwires that, in the relative sense, Satan has placed so that people cannot understand the evangel given to Paul. Now, let me get back to William Barclay. So I'll tell you, all right, why was he, wasn't he a believer? Okay, first off, you can't believe Paul's gospel and believe in free will. He believed that you could choose... You could choose your destiny and end up in hell, but then hell wasn't eternal. So the free will thing takes away the fact that Jesus died for unbelief. Hell obviously does not exist. The immortality of the soul denies the death of Christ. So what Paul laid out for you Jesus died for the sins of the world, was entombed, and was resurrected. So his belief in, in these three doctrines of demons, he, he didn't believe Paul's evangel. And another thing I noticed, like a lot of Christians, not all of them, but a lot of them, Barclay believed in evolution. 
Evolution is a theory, by the way. It's never been proven. And if you read things that were written a hundred years ago, I'm sorry, but we're getting dumber. We're not evolving. I believe our ancestors were far more intelligent than we are. I mean, these are people that started architecture, language, you know, forging, weapons, uh, tools. But, I mean, we can't even recreate what the Romans built or the Greeks built right now. So evolution is a joke. But with Barclay, he went with the path of le least resistance. Christians will believe in something like a parable, uh, the rich man and Lazarus. They'll take a parable literally and say that that's what it meant, but they'll take the creation account and say that it's a parable. They are completely just ass backwards. Okay, I'm getting on, I'm getting off topic here. Back to Barclay. Besides his belief in the doctrines of demons, he made a fatal mistake. In not believing in miracles, he denied the virgin birth of Christ, which was a miracle. Jesus emptied himself of celestial glory, and then God supernaturally placed him inside Mary's womb, and he became a little cluster of cells. It was a great sacrifice. It was a great miracle. Barclay did not believe this. He believed that it was a natural birth through Joseph. Joseph and Mary coming together. Okay, he didn't think this one through. According to Paul, in chapter 5 of Romans, I believe, we sin because we're mortal. Mortality is passed down to us from our parents. Came from Adam. So all these generations just keeps on getting passed down. If Jesus was the actual son of Joseph, guess what Joseph passed down to Jesus? Mortality. And because of that mortality, by default, you have made the Savior of the world a sinner. He can't take away any sin if he's a sinner. William Barclay, as intelligent as the man was, did not think that one through. So, no. Universalism, although... Well, universalists, although they do give God and his character more credit than Christians do, it is not the gospel, it's not the evangel. It is the result of the message. It's the end result. And the focus should always be on the accomplishment of Jesus Christ and also rebuking false teachings which are meant to derail the accomplishment of Jesus Christ. When the eons are over and we're at the consummation, we're at the end, then all of creation can rejoice in what universalist sort of claim. You know, God all in all. Then we can, you know, sort of uh, let our guard down and, and just enjoy it and look back at it and say, wow, what an adventure. But right now we're in the trenches. I am not a universalist. Please don't call me a universalist. It's an insult. I believe in universal reconciliation. I will never hang my coat on the eventual salvation of all, even though it's a great introductory. It is a great way to introduce people to the truth that Jesus was successful. And strangely, I've also thought about 
if you were to tell someone about the salvation of all, that sort of negates free will because there's no choice in the matter. But that's another topic again. I'm sorry. I, I get, all, get off on tangents. I have a particular message in my head and I'll I'll take notes and then I sort of just run off in another direction so this video <laughs> I'm not a universalist William Barclay was not a believer and beware the doctrines of demons I mean I, I go after these things as much as possible free will the Trinity immortality of the soul in hell. Those are the four big ones. I think everything else trickles off of those four. Until Christ calls his body to him. That should be the number one focus. Okay. Um, thanks for listening. I hope I made some sense. God bless you. Y'all have a good day.